Now that we are familiar with symmetry operations, we can actually define point groups of molecules. A point group of a molecule is nothing but a set of symmetry operations which you can apply to this molecule and which would bring the compound to superposition on itself. Now let me show you how to define these point groups. Let's say we have a molecule and we want to figure out what the point group of this particular molecule is. In order to figure that out, we have to answer a couple of questions. First question is, does the molecule have a C infinity rotation axis. Now infinity in this case means you can rotate the molecule by whatever angle you want. You will always bring the molecule to superposition on itself after you apply this C infinity symmetry operation. So let's say the answer to this question is yes. And in addition, you also have an inversion symmetry center in that molecule. If that's the case, we can define our first point group. And this point group is called D infinity H. And here's our example molecule. Let's take carbon dioxide. Here we have the double bonds between the carbon atom and the oxygen atoms. And here we have the electron lone pairs on the oxygen atom. Let's first find our C infinity rotation axis, which we also call principal rotation axis. It's right here. It goes through the molecule. That's our C infinity axis. So now we understand why we call it infinity. Now the D stands for dihedron, meaning that this molecule is made of two polygon faces. In this case, it's just two atoms, oxygen atom here and oxygen atom here. Now the inversion center is right here in the center where we have the carbon atom. And finally, we need to find out what the H stands for. This stands for a horizontal reflection plane and a horizontal reflection plane you can put in this way. So meaning that the carbon atom here is part of this horizontal reflection plane and you basically after applying the reflection you could transform this oxygen atom into this one and vice versa. If you do not have an inversion symmetry center then you would call this point group C infinity V. Also here, let's look at an example. For example, hydrochloric acid, HCl. Our lone pair is here. And also here, let's find the C infinity rotation axis. This is this one right here. And the V stands for a vertical reflection plane. And this vertical reflection plane would go right through this molecule, meaning hydrogen and chlorine would be elements of this reflection plane. Now, all these molecules which you see in here, meaning which have a C infinity rotation axis are linear molecules. Now let's say we cannot find a C infinity rotation axis, but instead we have six C5 rotation axes. If this is the case, and in addition, 
you have an inversion symmetry center then we call this point group IH. The I stands for icosahedron and the H, as you can imagine, for horizontal mirror plane. Now such a molecule is very, very difficult to draw, but there's an example which should be very, very familiar to you. As soon as you have a molecule which looks like a soccer ball, then it has an icosahedron symmetry. And there's an, indeed a molecule which looks like a soccer ball. It's C60. Next time when you look at a soccer ball, just convince yourself that it has 12 polygons, which have C5 symmetry, meaning they have five edges. And in addition, it consists of polygons which have six edges, meaning C6 symmetry. Now, just for completeness, if you don't have an inversion symmetry center, you would call this point group I. Now, what about molecules which do not have C5 rotation axes? You need to ask, does my molecule have three C4 rotation axes. If the answer to this one is yes, then also check if you can find an inversion symmetry center. And if that's the case, then our point group is called OH. Now the O stands for octahedron and this is how an octahedron looks like. Basically consists of two pyramids. One is facing up, one is facing down. Uh, let's see what example we have for this one. It's SF6. Sulfur hexafluoride has the sulfur atom right of the center of this octahedron and the fluorine atoms are here at the corners of the octahedron. Let's make sure we find our rotation axes. So one which goes through the entire octahedron right here is rotation axis number one. This is a C4 rotation axis. Then we have one which goes to this corner here. That's another Z4 rotation axis one through here and those are our three rotation axes and the inversion symmetry center is here right in the center of the molecule where we have our sulfur atom and also just for completeness if we do not have an inversion symmetry center we call this point group O. Okay, let's move on. If we do not have C4 axes, let's take a look if we have C3 axes, to be precise, if we have four C3 axes. And again, let's check for the inversion center. If yes, then we call this point group TH. Get myself a little bit more space here. And here you see how it actually looks like. So we have one tetrahedron here. And when we rotate this tetrahedron by 180 degree around this rotation axis, then we end up with the one down here. And this entire structure here makes our TH point group. Let's see if we find the C3 rotation axis. One is here, and the other ones are a little bit difficult to find. So let's draw some lines here so that you can easier identify where those are. So this triangle here with the center in here defines another C3 rotation axis. 
Then there's another one right here and the rotation axis here goes to the center. And rotation axis number four, we find here. So four C3 rotation axis and the inversion center is here in the center of the molecule. And there are examples which have such a symmetry, for example, iron transition metal complexes, where you have the iron in the center here, and then you have six ligands, which are around the iron atom, and usually these are two times positively charged. So the ligands would be here at the corners of our tetrahedron shapes. Let's say we do not have an inversion symmetry center. And in addition, we have six reflection planes. If this is the case, we end up with the point group TD. Now here you see how a TD point group, also called a tetrahedron, looks like. And an example for this one is methane, where you have the carbon atom in the center of this tetrahedron and the hydrogen atoms are here at the corners of the tetrahedron. Let's also try to find the rotation axes. So all the rotation axes go right to the center of these triangles, which define this tetrahedron. So this one is one C3 rotation axis. Here you have another one, and then one which is pointing down here and one which is pointing away from us. And in addition, you can find the reflection planes. So just imagine you draw your reflection plane through here, and you can also draw it through here and through here, and then you would basically end up with the same compound after you do this reflection symmetry operation. If we do not have a reflection plane, then we call this point group simply T. Uh, 